Hey everyone and welcome back. This is going to be the first video in the playlist where we start creating our fantasy scene. So it's going to look a little bit like what I have in the background here. The main difference being is that the process I took to make this render in Unreal, I used uh, ZBrush for the sculpting, Substance Designer for the texturing. Um, and I'm going to avoid those steps in this playlist just so that everybody can follow along with the free package Blender. So I'm going to make something very similar to this scene, but we'll be making a kind of low poly stylized version instead. Most of this will end up just being a single color, which will still allow us to look at things like texturing inside of Blender as well. Uh, but like I said, the main thing is trying to make sure that everybody can follow along with a free package. And just so that you have a kind of idea of how we're going to be approaching this as we go through the playlist, I'm going to look at going through the assets one at a time, going from the easiest to the most difficult assets. So that as we build up the skills going through this, you should find even the more complex thing that we'll be looking at in the end, like the bucket should be very easy. Uh, once we've built up the techniques, the shortcuts and the general processes of moving around Blender. So in this one, the most simple asset is we're going to be making our rock. I'm going to actually go through a couple of different ways that we can make rocks inside of Blender. You can choose which one best suits you and I'll go through some of the pros and cons as well. The great thing about rocks is that we don't need to be too worried about the topology for this because when it comes to UV mapping, which will be a subject a little bit later down the line, we can get away with a little bit more, especially with low poly work and especially with rocks because they're generally not going to be a focal point. We'll still be making sure that these are game ready though, so we will be taking some consideration. For the first process, we're going to create a new sphere. So Shift A to create an object. We're going to go and select a UV sphere. If I come down to the options menu over here, just want to lower the segments a little bit. So we've got 32 segments, 16 rings. We can probably make that 16 and 16 because like I've mentioned, this is going to be nice and low poly anyway. So this will be a fine starting point for our first rock now, kind of keeping this similar to the previous render I've just shown. I know that I want this rock to be kind of uh, pretty long and thin. I'm gonna stick with that general shape. So to begin with, I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and we can just make this a little bit longer on the X axis. So press S, X, and then we'll scale this out. Uh, we can probably make this a little bit wider. So S, Y, and add a bit of scale. That's height is that's generally the silhouette I think I'm looking for so that will be fine. Now the nice way about doing it this way we will be decimating this a little bit uh, but you do have the option once we've done a bit more work to this to leave the detail as it is and the nice thing about that is if you choose to do that is that you can still very easily grab the edges and add the seams for the UV mapping but like I said uh, we can get away with some kind of shortcuts when it comes to rock modeling and UVing anyway. So before we get into that, what I want to do is go to our sculpting tab at the top here, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of shape and uh, get a kind of organic feel to our rock. So the brush that I want to use for this is the scrape brush over here. We can increase the size of our brush, which is the yellow ring that we have going around, or maybe that's white, uh, and we can change the scale of that by pressing F and then not clicking anything, but just dragging the mouse forward and back or left and right will update the, uh, the size of the brush. I want a kind of bigger brush so that we can affect a lot of different area on the rock. And then we can just start sculpting away to scrape this into place and just look that little bit more organic. Uh, I'm gonna control Z back a few times here. I just saw as I press there, uh, this defaults to have the mirror mode on. I completely forgot about that. So we want to come over to the right hand side. I'm gonna to go to our stroke drop down here. So you need to be uh, on the brush option. In the scrape brush, uh, we just want to go not to stroke, sorry, to symmetry and make sure that X mirror is turned off. Uh, so what that was doing is on the X axis, if I sculpt it over here, you can see the other side being affected as well. Uh, and that can make things a little bit confusing. So we'll just turn the X symmetry off and then we can just come in and carry on kind of scraping away at this to get that kind of worn down and uh, rough look that you'd normally expect on a rock. So this is a nice way to kind of approach looking at a little bit of sculpting as well as modeling, um, just to get, like I said already, a kind of organic feel to this rather than something which is just generated and pulled around by itself. And I've got no real goal when I'm doing this, so I am just kind of scraping things away until I get a silhouette that I think looks kind of interesting. You might want to tab in and out of the wireframe mode to get a better feel of what the, uh, the verts and the edges are looking like. Uh, because when you're in this, it can be a little bit hard to tell. And then go back to modeling just to do your final check. 
So this is the kind of silhouette that I want. This is going to be a nice long rock in the scene that we're going to have. Now, the only thing is this, for me, has a little bit too much information. Like I said, if you're looking to keep things tidy, uh, something with 200 verts is maybe a little bit high for a rock, but not insane. You can definitely get away with a lot more than that. But just visually, uh, you have two options with this. Now, we could either come in and press space to search and go shade smooth which will give you a rock that looks more like this now that's the sort of thing you'd want to do if you have information coming from a sculpt if you are uh, hand painting or texturing the rock to give it that detail you would add the detail in the texture now, i think something looking this smooth in a low poly scene is going to look a little bit weird because we're just going to be using like i said a flat color so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to choose the other option which is to shade flat which is kind of what it was set to by default where you can really see the faces now because of that that means I also want this to be slightly lower poly. So I'm going to come into the modifier tab, which is just here on the right hand side. I'm going to add a modifier and I'm just going to do a simple decimate modifier. Now I'm going to keep this on the collapse option and I'm just going to collapse the faces in by a given ratio here until I get something which I think looks a little bit more low poly and stylized as I'm looking for. Now this will unfortunately mess up the topology a little bit. You will also be saving a lot of verts and faces this way and I think this just looks a little bit more interesting and is going to render a lot, a lot more nicely in the game engine. So I'm going to leave that somewhere around here. I think that's enough decimation. So I'm just going to apply this and we can come in as well. And if you wanted to tidy things up a little bit, you can start moving vertices around in vert mode. So I've just pressed one as the shortcut there to go into vertex mode uh, was originally in edge mode. Um, and you could do things like that section of four tries there could probably quite easily be a single face. So I've just selected those two verts, press Alt and M, and I'm gonna merge those at last because I uh, I selected that one last. And that way we've, we've cut those four tries into two tries. Um, and when you look at it here, it won't look that much different. Uh, but I mean, as far as the topology goes, I think that's gonna be fine for this rock. And that is got the general shape that I want there. So that's gonna be perfectly fine. And that is the first technique now the next thing I'm going to do is create a new object. So Shift A, create a new mesh. I'm going to create a cube. This isn't actually specific to the rock. This is just something that I'll be doing for the rest of this playlist. Um, and one thing I should mention is if you're following along with the whole series, then I'm going to be saving this all in one Blender file. I'd recommend you do the same thing. I'll show you how to collapse things down into collections to keep things nice and tidy. Uh, but this is going to be a really handy way for us to keep scale in mind. And that's why I'm using this cube. So what I'm going to do with the cube is I'm going to go into edit mode, press G to move Z to restrain this to the Z axis, and then one to move this one unit up in the Z axis. Uh, this means now that if we go back into edit mode, I can press S, Z, and two to make this two units tool on the Z axis. And you can see because we're scaling from the pivot point down here, it just scaled straight up and then press S, Shift Z. So to scale on everything except the Z axis, and I'll make this something like 0.7. So the idea of this, uh, we've got a two meter cuboid now. This is roughly the size of an average human. Uh, and this gives us a good idea of the type of scale that we're working with. So I'm just going to press G and uh, we'll say X. And I'm just going to move this along on the X axis. So I can now see that in comparison to an average human, uh, this rock is kind of how I envisioned it actually scale wise. But this just means that uh, we're not going to have the scale completely blown out of proportion. So the final things will be I'm just going to rename this cube. So select the cube and call this dot scale ref. So that this always appears at the top of everything. I'm going to call the sphere. I'm going to rename this to just be uh, SM underscore rock one. And we may as well go ahead and create our new collection now. So I'm going to right click on the scene collection, select new. I'm going to call the first one that we had. I'll call this one, uh, rename this to generic. And this is where I'll keep the scale reference. I'm going to move the SM underscore rock into a new collection and we'll rename this one rocks. And this now means that if we didn't want to see the scale reference, we're not always going to need that to be in view. Uh, we can hide that one, but we'll keep our rocks visible or rock at the moment. Uh, and we'll be using this process, as I said, working from one Blender project. As we go through and add the, the lamppost and all the other things, we can hide the rocks when we don't need them. We can turn them back on when we want to check that the scale is in proportion and things like that. So it's just going to be a nice quick workflow. Okay, so this has taken a little bit longer than I expected because there were a lot of concepts that I kind of wanted to get out of the way. And I do think they will be very important for the rest of the project. 
So I did want to make sure that we've got the concepts like collections, uh, scale references, and things like that will be very helpful, especially if you're new to modeling. So I did want to get those out of the way. So this has taken a bit longer than planned. Future ones will be a lot more streamlined because we can just jump straight into the content. Uh, but the main reason I've done the scale reference thing is if we just come straight in with a mesh, the general thing to do is you'll, you'll create your sphere. You'll think that looks a bit small because it's the default size. So you instantly scale that up and then start working with this and scale it out and get to the same kind of silhouette that we have. But then when you turn your scale reference on, you can see in comparison to a normal human, uh, this would have been an absolutely gigantic boulder rather than the rock that I had in mind. So that's why I think that's important. Something I just wanted to cover and include. Haven't really seen people mention that before and it can cause issues if you're not aware of it as a new modeler when you're taking things then into your uh, 3D game engine. So I'll leave this one here. The next topic will be purely the creation of the uh, remaining rocks with the other technique that I wanted to show. So if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, do remember to leave a like, that really helps the channel and to reach even more people. And of course, if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, do consider subscribing and remember to hit the notification bell to get those updates. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.